All right. Well, I'm ready. Uh, since my job is about interpreting a house to a public, I often think about an idea of a house and what it means to different people. Until I was in my late 20s, I lived in crummy little apartments. So personally, for a while, I did not have much personal experience when it comes to a house. A, blo a block of flats I grew up in was a product of a communist Poland. Today, when you visit Poland, you can even book a visit to one of those apartments furnished in the socialist style, of course, with a shot of vodka and a slice of bread with lard and pickles. The first home I ever lived in was a Victorian era gargantuan house that my husband bought before we met. Uh, yes, you wonder if this was uh, truly an upgrade. <laughs> we fixed it some since then. We have uh, two kids now, for goodness sake. Uh, speaking of which, uh, this is how my quarantine has been. Yes, these are my own children. Uh, Jimmy Fallon nailed it when he said no Olympics. Instead, they handing all the medals to anyone who's stuck at home with a kid under five. But I digress. Thankfully for my own sanity, the house I work for uh, was in much better shape when I arrived here in 2005. It is a splendid example of rights work from the prairie style era. And in 2005, it opened to the public after a major restoration. Uh, before the restoration, uh, it did not look so great. As a society and as individuals, we often undervalue the impact of beautiful places. Time and time again, buildings become subject to total indifference. Thank God for people who understand some places should be preserved and universally celebrated. So back to the pandemic time, my colleague Tom and I, two glorified housekeepers, or shall I say the American Prairie. This is day 83 of Westcott quarantine and we are visitorless, frustrated, and anxious, very anxious. Kevin, I'm not sure if people can see me. Extreme times really push us to do things we otherwise would not do. We found ourselves denied the most important role of hosts, taking people on a tour, having parties, hugging, shaking hands, sharing a drink, a sensory overload under our current circumstances. So we turned to a virtual sphere. What can I say? I have been a devil, I have been an angel. I took repeated shot, shots of simulated fall, which painfully reminded me I'm a middle-aged woman. I don't like myself on camera, but due to right virtual visits, I pushed myself to learn acting for dummies and do what I can. I recruited my family to make a large heart out of wooden crates. I recreated a scene from Love Actually. The quarantine turned me into an attention seeker, that's for sure. And yes, my dear husband and my friends went along and helped me respond to Chrissy Teigen Photoshop challenge. You may ask, why do we try so hard? Because I believe fiercely that our creativity can lead us through the hardest of times. I believe that our creativity can help us cope and I can make, make others feel better. I guess I'm trying to say I've been holding to my own creativity as my lifeline during this time. And it is about something bigger. It's about pushing myself to be creative for the cause I believe in. When I ask myself what has been the most important role of this place over the last 15 years, it is its potential to spur new and unexpected creativity. My favorite memories are related to the experience and art that artists created in response to this iconic building. In 2007, we invited a Japanese-born and Seattle-based painter, Junko Yamamoto, and a Japanese rock band, Soft, based in Kyoto, Japan, to Springfield. You cannot deny the impact Japanese culture had on Wright. This was our contemporary spin on his magnificent obsession. I will never forget the thrill of hanging Junko's work, contemporary yet steeped in layers of her identity and culture on the walls of Frank Lloyd Wright home. Some people told me not to mess with art exhibits in this house. At that moment, I was particularly happy I did not listen. So the band Soft is coming, all six musicians are on their way, all the way from Kyoto, 
and we are anxiously preparing for their performances in three different cities and four different venues. Then we get a call. They got detained by Homeland Security at the Detroit airport. We cannot quite understand the reasons, and of course, as we go back and forth on the phone with Junko translating, uh, we wonder, um, but they are here perfectly legal, so what's the reason? We may actually never exactly know what turned Homeland Security officer against our friends, other than maybe this is a case of lost in translation and possibly a complete lack of sense of humor. It actually took our United States congressman and his willingness to help starving artists to intervene. Did I mention we tried everything? After about 36 long hours, the band got released and we did our right now event. Real people, real artists are those who transformed this house for me to the point that I can no longer view it as a frozen moment in history. People make this place a living house. And to think it has been possibly because over a hundred years ago, an architect, frankly trite, had an amazing creative idea. Thank you all. <laughs>